Hey, Kat here. Finally, I have reviewed all the other Velier Clarins. I've been reviewed a Claren that wasn't Velier. I've reviewed an aged version of this, which I didn't really care for that much. Um, and now, finally, uh, Claren Casimir is in the U.S. for me to, you know, enjoy and talk about. So, um, to repeat the story on this um, that I've told in other videos, this had to be pulled from the shelves because of lead content worries. Um, it wasn't, you know, incredibly toxic, but, you know, the levels were a bit elevated, so they, they yanked it from the shelves. Um, but now it's backed. And uh, the version we got here is, this is the, and just a reminder to other reviewers out there, um, there's going to be batch variations on these because, uh, you know, wild yeast, um, you know, weather changes, you know, sensitive varietals, things like that. So please note which version you're reviewing. Um, I'm reviewing the uh, 2018 vintage, but there are multiple batches of the vintage and they are telling you the batches. Um, but this is the one at 51.4% alcohol. Um, Master Distiller Falbert Cal uh, Casimir made from 100% cane uh, juice, I believe, uh, from Hawaii, uh, the cane. Um, pot distilled, wild fermented, um, all the good stuff. This is in, this is actually from Baraderas, which is on the, the southern peninsula of Haiti, but on the sort of northern side of the peninsula, um, right next to the sea, actually. It's, it, it looks nice. Um, they have a cool church. Um, anyhow, so... Um, this might be my last Claren review for a while. If you, by the way, if you don't know anything about Clarins, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I did a little introduction video, which I will link down below on why you might be interested in these things. Um, anyways, let's get some tasting notes. Um, so you can tell it's Claren. This is not a huge, big, fat, you know, Jamaican monster. It's very, it's very lean and and. Um, um, kind of, you know, it feels like a, like a, like a weight class athlete, you know, it's like lean and precise, but still, you know, hits hard. Um, big aromatics, um, kind of a, in reference to the other Clarins, kind of a crossbreed between like the Vival and the Le Rocher, if you can think of it that way. So there's, there's a, there's an olivey thing especially green olives, um, and a certain kind of, um, like wet, leafy, just kind of general herbaceousness, like just wet herbs, like you picked up from a, you know, um, roadside stand in, I don't know, um, Northern Italy or something. Um, but there's also like a kind of a soft, round, sweet note. It's almost like if you, if you muddled marshmallows in olive oil or something like that, it's, it's, it's really hard to get, get one's, you know, uh, nose around. That's nice. But then there's also, you know, the more baseness, there's the pickle, sort of sun-dried tomato, tomato saucy thing. Um, kind of a bullion cube note, not, maybe not chicken. Maybe it's more like, you know, the, the sort of vegetable bullion things. Um, fennel, but it's more like fresh fennel than, than the dried stuff, so it's, it's still a little, you know, green. Maybe a little tire, like a, but not a whole, like half a fresh tire, not a whole one. Um, some, like, fresh plastic, like, you know, an action figure just came off the, the assembly line. Um, maybe like, like one orange, uh, I'm sorry, lime slice. There's a little bit of a liminess there, not, but it's, I mean, it's really dominated by sort of the the olives and the olive oil, marshmallowy thing. Um, it's just like a stoved black tobacco note that I've gotten in Clarins before. Um, pipe tobacco, um, rubos tea. The leaves more so than the actual tea. And something like something mango like kind of stone fruity, but more like the like the the core of the stone of the mango than the actual, you know, flesh of the fruit. Kind of a 
like whole cardamoms in there, a little bit of a little bit of um a little bit of Christmas spiciness, not too much. And just kind of straight up cane syrup. Um yeah. Definitely just a little bit of, you know, um old school cane syrup. I'm gonna add some water to this. Go back. Uh, wait a minute. I'm gonna taste this. Um and then, uh, and then I'm going to add some water to this because I haven't done that part yet. Sorry. Extremely like creamy and delicious. Still lean. Still a weight class athlete. But there is just a mouth coating nature to this, which reminds me of the La Roche actually. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Casimir was actually using a little bit of, of cane syrup um, in his in his distillation. Um, I know he's, he's throwing in like some spices and things. I remember vaguely seeing that on the on the Velier site, but um, sorry, I'm just, I like this nose. It's it's a very it's complex, but it's not you know. It's just nice to smell. Um, there's lots of things going on. Mm -hmm. oh, just had to do it more, more time. Okay, fresh tire again. A little rubber. Olive oil again, definitely. But then there's like a, like a whipped cream thing. Um, olive juice, brine, um, clove, spearmint. Um just yeah, like olive, olivey stuff, um, and a kind of minerality, not like, not like flintiness. This is more like a little bit of maybe chalk or something, but nice chalk. Um, stove tobacco again, rubos again, um, fennel again. There's a kind of transfer between the nose and the palate, um, yeah, there's some, but there's something like a like like a cooling herbs thing with like a spritz of lime. It's something reminds me of like a Los Altos tequila, like a blanco, going on in this. Um, and weirdly enough, there's an Angostura bitters note, which I'm really enjoying. Um, just you know, splash splash some some bitters into your into your tequila. Um, mm, Turkish coffee, uh, Turk Avesi, um, if you're ever in the country. Yeah, kind of coffee with it's really thick and a little bit spiced. Um, you can actually buy the beans, they're great. They're like really weird and kind of greenish. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this is. <laughs> this is really surprisingly approachable. It's, I don't think it's as approachable as the Le Rocher, but it's actually more representative of the um, of the sort of other uh, Clarins out there. So I'm going to add. That's probably enough. Um, more on what this does with, when you add water to it later. It's so the reason I maybe the reason I, I pick up on cane syrup um, is well, not not just because I, I I think maybe there's a little bit there. Um, not just not just like in the usage, but just in the notes. Because after talking about it in the Hamden review, and I think, and some message boards, um, I went out and finally bought myself some Steens um, after not having it in forever. This is uh, this is a very southern thing. Um, we use it. This is like you know southern grannies making pecan pie and stuff. Um, yeah, this is one, I mean this is just one of those great things about southern culture, along with sweet tea and. You know, barbecue and um, oh, what else? Um, seersucker and um, you know all those. We have, we have so many great things as a as a as a guy coming from the south, and somehow we we get stuck in the white supremacy thing. Um, I don't know why we sh you know seersucker is much better, in my opinion. As is this. Go go buy yourself some steens. This is probably going to be my my house sweetener for the next couple of months. Um, anyhow. Uh, back to the Casimir. I'm already enjoying this more than the aged version, by the way. That one's almost a little... It feels like there's a... 
when you put something in oak, you give it enough time and it's going to get, you know, more complex again. There's like a dumb period, like, uh, depends on, you know, how long, maybe, maybe a little over a year in that starts, it actually gets less complex than when, than the original spirit was. Um, uh, so there's like a little bit of a little bit of a curve of, of sort of quality um comes back over time but you know you, you're losing a lot from the initial spirit anyways let's go back to this um now add a little bit of water actually it's the um okay so there's a little bit of um uh like a you know the pumpkin candies from halloween that's starting to come out um but it's really more the um like the tomatoes and the green olives that are really coming out um, with water. A little, little white pepper too. Um, some white grapes, just straight up, you know, like, you know, supermarket white grapes. Um, maybe crush them up a little bit. Actually, it might actually, it, it, it's kind of, the, the sweetening up is nice, but it actually loses a lot when you add a little bit of water to this. So on the palette, yeah, kind of the same thing. It actually thins out a little bit, which I've never had happen to me um, with Clarin before. Um, try it one more time. It just get quite a bit sweeter and a little bit more, you know, kind of white peppery, which is kind of nice. Um, the finish is actually very Christmas spicy. It's like, you know, yeah, like cafe latte and then Christmas spices. Like you could add some food coloring to this and fool someone into thinking like it's an aged whiskey or, or an aged spirit in any case. The, um, No, because there's not really any, like, vanilla stuff going on. But still, I mean, you're getting cinnamon and clove and nutmeg and cardamom. Um, I think, I've, I've been going back and forth on this. I think I might actually prefer this neat. Um, most clarins, part of the fun is, is adding water to them and seeing, you know, what they do. Like, you know, the fall and, and sejus in, in particular just kind of go, go nuts on you. Um, which I love. This one actually loses probably, it gains some, but I think it actually loses more than it gains. And that's, you know, that's not something I'll, I like so much. So honestly, I was looking at a 90 um, um, going into this because it's just, it has a, you know, a, a nice, this, this kind of fusion of approachability while still having, you know, that ha that it reminds me of the Le Rocher again, um, but it has more of the sort of clarity, herbaceousness, and, and green olivey quality to it. That you know, um, I, I was ready to go ninety on this. Not never had the complexity of, of something like the Sejus, but um, but then like the water kind of brings it down. The water. I mean, the, the thinning out and this kind of simplifying really does bother me. So I'm going to give this an 89. Uh, I still love it. Um, just maybe, you know, um, I, I will say, step back. At this point in time, having tried five of these things, well, six counting the aged version of this, um, this would probably be the one I would point people to as like the one to start on because it feels a little bit more representative of the whole category than something like the Le Rocher, or even the Milo, uh, the humble little, little Milo that I reviewed first. That's just nice. I mean, this is, I mean, some people are, are, are not gonna like this, like some normals just aren't gonna get into this, but it's, there's enough appealing, appeal to this. There's enough of a, you know, a kind of, you know, pumpkin candy -y thing going on that I think I can actually find its way on most palettes. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, 
go try this stuff on your friends. It's it's around now. You can, but they have kicked up the price. This the, these used to be around forty two bucks. I think it's in the, like forty five now. Whatever. Um, Lovely. Um, hope you enjoyed watching. Hope this was useful. Cheers.